supporters that they're idiots and, and figure out how to talk to them. But it, how do you talk to someone when you know you don't have the same language, basically? Right. There's and that. There's also. I read a great article this week about um, about evangelical America and how basically we we can't talk to them even if we learned how to speak their language. There may be nothing we can say to them to get to them because of their background and the nature of fundamentalism, Mm -hmm. which is that they always have a reference point, which is the Bible, and the other reference points are generally accepted uh, people, generally accepted voices who who they'll listen to. And anything outside of that, by definition of being in that fundamentalist community, anything outside of that is wrong and not okay. And even if you come at them, you know, saying, hey, look, this Bible quote supports feminism. It's it's in Proverbs. If you're evangelical and listening, it is in Proverbs, the Proverbs woman. That's real. Um, They'll go, they'll go, nope. And and that that goes against what I think already. Therefore, it must be wrong. Yeah. But if you, if you, if you have people who think in a group mentality, you see, we fight for the right to be the individual who we choose to be. You have to start there. You start with the individual. But those of us who decide, that's how Jim Jones was enable people to travel from French Guyana, from, from L.A. to the French Guyana to drink oh Kool-Aid. God, Kool-Aid. That's, that's how you get them to do that, okay, by the way that you continuously follow a group of thinking, but we're not thinking for yourself. You know, when I was going through a Christian retreat, the one thing the pastor stated, he said, Mr. Ship, it was like, it was like he was talking to me, you must study the Bible. So what did I do? I went out and got me a giant commentary, and I got me a concordance, and I started to study. So when I sat in church, I said, hey, that's not what that is. Mm-hmm. It's such and such. I, I would invite in the, the Jehovah's Witness. Come on in, because I knew my shit. I was like, oh, yeah. I could, you know. And I knew that it was metaphorical, not historical. So you have to understand these things and, 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 and look at them so you can, you know, but those that don't. Yes, you That's can dangerous. sell this. Yes. That's dangerous. Yeah, to, my, my so I father... always say that. To stand on this side of the fence, to mm-hmm. be the individual that you want to be, you better have some, you better be able to, one, own your shit, as you were saying, deal with your crap, and, and then be able to, you, because you're going to get backlash from the group. My father raised me to also, you know, see it, like you said, as metaphorical, look at for the lessons and that sort of thing, instead mm-hmm. of seeing it for like fundamentalists and just wait for the pastor to tell me what to think about what the Bible <laughs> says, mm-hmm. which basically just invites people to say whatever the hell they want and then people trusting them. Right. Well, but I was going to say, yeah. in terms of rebutting uh, the evangelicals, so many of them don't actually no scripture so you should also make stuff up you know just oh no i I don't remember where exactly but uh somewhere in the gospel according to mark uh it says that you need to fuck off and let me mow my lawn at 8 a.m on a sunday really yeah oh it's in there i did something with goats you know they didn't have lawn mower you just make it convincing enough that oh okay and even (laughs) even though there are documentaries that state on how the bible was written uh that the book of Mark actually should be in front of the book of Matthew, but because the book of Matthew was written better, that is the reason why the book of Matthew is, is there ahead of the book of Mark. You know, or, or why that there, there, there were more female apostles than there were male apostles. There were more, I mean, if you look at the Gnostic Gospels and you start finding out about, you know, the information, or at the, at the meeting of, of Nice, when Constantine decided to put the Bible together, that's when all these different things were done. And there are certain books of the Bible that are not in there. The book of Thomas was not in there because it bumped head with the book of John. Didn't want that. Talked of Revelation. They didn't want you having revelations of your own. They wanted to be able to control. So, I mean, there's so much information. If you would dig, you would find. I was one of those guys that wanted to know, okay, why is this this, this way? Yeah. You know, want to look a, little, look, look a little deeper. But what do they say in the evangelical community? They go, oh, no, the enemy, yeah. Satan made those other books way after the fact and they just appeared and Satan has created an illusion to make people believe in that. So don't pay yeah. attention to this other stuff. Only pay attention to the stuff that makes you believe what the mainstream ideas are and anything that challenges that, no. It's and like go- slavery. Mm-hmm. The slaves were taught to follow the Bible. So wait a minute. The, you're beating my ass every day and you're doing it in the name of God. That's why they didn't want them to read because once a slave started to gain knowledge 
and read. Say, wait a minute, man. That ain't what this, that, who the fuck told you this shit? And that's, they knew eventually they were going to gain the knowledge because once they gained the knowledge, that, that, that would make them a threat. And they couldn't control them anymore. So you even try to say that your God was, you know, it's just, it's just, just a way. I mean, you, you have to, you have to just gain the knowledge in order to, to, to shut the folks up. And, and going back to the Nunes memo, uh, that's why I don't think a democratic memo would <laughs> effectively change anything. Mm-mm. No. Uh, yeah, does. but it, you know, it would be nice to have the facts out there. Excuse me, as part of public record. Yeah. Just so that, you know, in 20 years when when we're looking back at what went wrong, <laughs> that that someone, you know, he can easily access It'll just the information more conspiracy to, theorists, though. Yeah, but yeah. that's, you know, that's going to happen anyway. You know, yeah. it's, it, the, you can't, it, it, it's like you can't childproof the world. No. And you can't prevent yourself from moving forward because people you know people are going to try and hold you back right you know uh yeah people are going to try and find justification for whatever they can't explain Mm -hmm. whether it's it's god uh you know punishing them for what the the homosexuals do whether whether it's the the blacks whether it's the jews whether it's the uppity women you know it's it's there there is always going to be a scapegoat you know when i when i i know it it sounds trite you know whenever i say oh yeah well people are horrible you know but it's the the thing is human nature is bad tends to bad. make us want to find another to be against and you know it's not not everybody and a lot of people you know we we are domesticated like right. like animals to overcome these things we have been taught many of us not to pee on the couch right you know to to put it in in basic terms mm-hmm. but we we are animals we we have thumbs and brains well that, that, that's gotten as, us as, into a lot of as trouble they did say what separates us are these these Th- right those here. are thumbs uh, exactly are these <laughs> I'm just saying that that and the knowledge that uh, yeah, yeah people can't see <laughs> yeah, but I knew you would tell them. Yeah. Well, yeah, so I would do it, and you would translate. For that's them. like what I is said, and the Vin Scully. Yeah, um, but yeah, you know. So the the idea is that we need to be better human beings, and as I understood it, the whole idea of Christianity, the the message of Jesus Christ, uh, and the whole story is supposed to be. You're never going to be perfect. Right. Jesus was perfect. Yeah, you know, leave leave that up to a Jewish mother and yeah. father to say. Believe me, I've had to live up to that all my life too. Um, but the idea is: look, you're never going to be perfect, but you should try and be we more all like fall me. short of the glory of God. Yeah, but yes. you know, the, you don't stop trying. You know, no. you you try and be a better person. And these people yeah. who call themselves Christians. Um, I, I believe it's, oh God, uh, it, it's either Damon Wanker. I think it's Damon. It might be Oscar or Sagastume though, but one of them, uh, it, it was Damon talks about, uh, I, you know, not having any issues with Christians, but it's the Christers, you know, and these are like the evangelicals who two weeks ago declared that Donald Trump gets a mulligan on being a horrible person according to biblical standards, not my hippie liberal commie standards. Same people who, like I said, they're the same folks that thought it was cool to beat slaves. It's the, it's the same. That's what drives people crazy is that you have uh, that what bothers a lot of blacks is why would you follow Christianity? When the very person who was who enslaved you had used this book, you know you're following, but it, it's always been proven those that have conquered follow, the, you know the the conquerors in you know uh, uh, religion. I mean, Cortez. I mean, hey, what did he do? Indians? What did he say? Hey, put the knife in you. You were it brought them Catholicism. Same with uh, Christopher Columbus. He brought them Catholicism. That you will follow. The, the Pope and all these people that you didn't know. Well, and uh, Kat, I don't want to like 
throw you off because we didn't really talk about this uh, before the show. But as as an economist, um, I because I, this sort of bleeds. We're going from the evangelicals just believing what the leaders tell them, despite mm-hmm. you know how ridiculous and how how much it may go against everything they're supposed to believe in. But we're seeing that uh, with the Republicans, and not you know surprised. But uh, between Donald Trump's tax cut. And the economic package that uh, they passed this week that is going to increase deficits, uh, not exponentially, but greatly, Um, you know, especially if you were paying attention, you know, eight of the last nine years when Obama was the president. I thought Republicans hated deficits. I thought so too. Um, I'm all I'm all about Rand Paul's stand last night about you know when he called out that hypocrisy. They were they hated deficits when it was Obama, and all of a sudden they're totally okay with deficits as long as it's Trump. Um, and he, Wouldn't be because yeah. he's a black man, would it? You know, it could be that. It could be that's a valid possibility, <laughs> but. Uh, I, I also think they're afraid of their own base. I, I think the old Democrats, I'm mean, not the old Democrats, the old Republicans of yesteryear, the Mitt Romney types, the George Bush types, the, you know, mm-hmm. old Paul Ryan types. Now we have new Paul Ryan. Uh, <laughs> they they really were. And, and now they see that nobody seems to agree with that Republican philosophy. I mean, all of their people got wiped out in the primaries who believed those things. And all that was left was Trump, who is everything that, you know, old Gop is not. He is a populist. He wants government spending on infrastructure. Uh, He appealed to those people in the unions because he wanted to bring that manufacturing back. He's not a globalist. He wants everything in America. That is not the GOP before. And yet he won. So the Republicans are kind of shaking in their boots and going back and reevaluating everything. And they kind of just want to stay in power. They want to stay in the office. So they're going to go with what Trump says because that's what the base wants. But if you look at so, Apple coming, like you know, I, I read an article on Pocket um, that you know they kind they cut a, a great deal to Apple and to Bezio. Okay, bringing back thirty eight billion, they're going to give that. They already had that money. They've made so much money overseas that you're really not doing. And if you're not helping the community, like Bezio is big in San Bernardino, okay. Be, uh, Bezos Be- from Amazon. Be- Bezos, yeah, and, Jeff Bezos, and, yeah, yeah. He he's in uh, San Bernardino, but okay, yeah. You went to a downtrodden city. You're making so much money, though. You're burning the people out. They had a guy who worked at Stater Brother. His brother worked at at uh, Amazon. They're both doing the same job, but Amazon's not union. The guy's brother's job is at Stater Brothers. He's making he's making thirty two bucks an hour doing the same job as his brother. His brother's getting wore out. Bezio's paying twelve twenty an hour and killing those guys. He's killing them. that they're firing people because they can't do the work. They're like it's straight slave labor. Well, Be- Bezos already has a reputation at Amazon. Uh, there was an article that came out I want to say three years ago, twenty fourteen, maybe mm-hmm. a little bit late twenty thirteen, about the company culture at Amazon Mm -hmm. that there was some woman who had to either should take a leave of absence either for her own breast cancer or Mm -hmm. to take care of a parent with breast cancer. I don't remember the exact story, but um, when she came back, you know, they let her go. They were like, Nope, you were gone for too long. We don't want to. And that's, that's downright cruel. You know, when someone has something that, that dramatic, you know, and that serious, which is the reason job. that yeah I'm sorry because y'all what uh, which is what got the Democrats in trouble is that they allowed the Republicans these different companies to get rid of all these unions and when you get rid of the unions I mean you what did you do I mean you you have nobody to fight for you okay on, I'm, I'm, on the I'm, other I'm, side of that on the other side of that though we've got this other imminent threat and I'm gonna harp on it as my the hill that I die on which is automation okay um, uh-huh. and uh-huh. and when you've got You've, you've got the different alternatives. Um, you could, you know, hang on to the unions and say, no, we're going to make people pay us more. What's going to happen is the corporations are going to go, okay, you know who doesn't have a union? This robot over here. Right. And so I'm just going to automate that job. So if the alternative to uh, 
a union is keeping job. The, the choice isn't between unions or non-union jobs anymore. That's mm. antiquated. The choice now is between do we do we allow them to automate these jobs because we hang on to this antiquated idea of a union, or do we let that go and accept that reality? And and it sucks.